Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Let's Really Ghost Thief 2. I apologize that this one took a few days, but, you know, real life intervenes. Amazingly enough, over the weekend and during Valentine's Day with a wife, real life was more compelling than playing Thief, but now everybody's back to work and I have a break between classes, so it's time to do the next mission, which is Framed. As always, I have separately uploaded the movie because I don't like spending time on it in my videos. They're long enough as is. Framed. The mechanists have installed an alarm mechanism in Shoals Gate Station that can be triggered by either mechanical eyes or the guards. Don't let them set off the alarm. The frame won't stick if the City Watch suspects you were involved. Don't knock out or kill anyone. Go to Lieutenant Hagen's office and grab a personal item of his to be used for framing him. Drop the personal item in the vault on the third floor, steal the strong box from the vault, and leave it in Lieutenant Hagen's office, and leave Shoalsgate Station. So, this mission is very easy to ghost, as is usually the case when the game forces you to essentially ghost by disabling your blackjack. That said, it's possible, with one hanging question, to perfect Supreme Ghost the mission, so that's what we're gonna try to do. Let's get started. Purchase screen, as always, we'll ignore it. No need for any of that. Now here, I'm gonna start off by showing you guys the Easter egg. I did this in my other playthrough, but I just love it so much, I'm going to show it to you again. Toss a scouting orb over the fence. Dancing zombies! Awesome! Now let's reload, because I don't want to leave the scouting orb over there. That would bust supreme. Now we will have to enter Shoals Gate through this building, but first, we want to loot this bar. So make sure you hang back and keep an eye on the watcher in front. Listen carefully, make sure it doesn't chirp at you. Now if you need them in this trash bin back here, there are two water arrows. I will be skipping them. And to get into the bar, you have to just pick the lock on the door. Still have to be careful of the watcher through the window. And just crawl under the bar and get the coins out of the box and the bottle. From ah, my favorite year. Behind the bar itself, and that's it. Just the two pieces of loot in here, so we can head back out. There's no way to relock the bar door, so we won't worry about that. Instead, we will take this opportunity to look at the map. We've been inside the bar, but we start outside. There's a moat all around Shoals Gate with two gate entrances. We're going to go in through the Shoals Gate Utility Building, which puts us in the drain, which is also oddly detailed in how well it's mapped out, but won't worry too much about that. And that takes us to the basement. Oh, that's the, that's the last page. So then we've got a very detailed map of Shoals Gate itself, which is nice. In the basement, we will come out through this drain pipe, and then we can head to the first floor through the maintenance room, which is ultimately what we will do. But first we'll want to loot over here. There's some loot in the morgue, and at least some equipment and a conversation in the interrogation area that we'll want to hear. So we'll clear the basement, and then we'll access the first floor through maintenance. I skipped a couple pages because I wanted to look at the first floor first. Plenty of stuff to find on the first floor, but really it's very easy to sneak around in this mission. When they're forcing you to sneak, they make it pretty easy to do, at least in the original game. But, with that said, we will have to find secret passages to get into the records hall and to move between floors and especially to get into the evidence area on the third floor, but we've got a front desk, conference rooms, guard posts, mess hall, training room, barracks, locker room, a main office, a target range, an armory. We'll hit pretty much all of them on our way through. Up on the second floor, 
We have Sheriff Truert's office, Warden Affairs, Guard Posts, Lieutenant Hagen's office, Narcotics, Lieutenant Mosley's office, Robbery Homicide, Vice, a waiting room, an officer's lounge. And here we actually have a map of the records hall, including the secure records room. And here we see there's a stairway up to evidence storage, which we won't be taking. We'll take a secret passage instead. On the evidence storage floor itself, we see mechanical faces positioned in at least two places. And this is important. Vault anteroom, grab a key from a guard to get in. Vault security, you'll need a code to shut off the mechanical guards. And the vault, you should be able to find a key to the vault in one of the lieutenant's offices. Now here is the issue with successfully supreme ghosting this mission. In order to open this door from the anteroom to vault security, we have to enter the code. There's no other way to open the door. Now the problem is that entering the code turns off the watcher in this room, which is a violation of one of the Supreme Ghost rules. But the room is eminently ghostable without turning off the watcher, and we have to get into the vault. There's no way to move inside without opening the door and the Watcher being deactivated is just a side effect. So much like Clitremus, I'm inclined to call it a success and not call the deactivation of that Watcher a bust, especially if you turn it back on right away, which I'll be doing. But if you think that's a bust, then it's not quite possible to supreme the mission. It's still well within the realm of possibility to perfect thief it. So with all that said, let's get inside. There's no way to relock this door either, so don't worry about that. We found 75 loot so far. I should have said that earlier. There was a. The box of coins had 25 loot in it, and the bottle of wine was worth another 50. Bringing our total to 75. Now, just hit that crank because there's a delay to close that behind us. Don't worry, we'll still be able to get out at the end of the mission. There's a total of 1,378 loot to be had in this mission. We've got 75 of it. Oh, we're underneath the moat right now. You can actually hear the watcher turning. Catch your breath as you have chances to do so. Kind of have to make a hairpin reverse here to find the next pipe. And you hear them now, and let me briefly discuss as we surface. Rats! The very creatures that are so often blamed for our own noises and sightings. The ghost rules pretty unambiguously state that you don't have to worry about rats. Even though they squeak, they don't attack you, they don't alert other AIs, so people don't worry about them. A few people have tried to argue that ghosting should require you to dodge rats, but as the official rules stand, you don't have to. Not even for Supreme. So, with that in mind, this room we've surfaced in has two flares in it if you want them. And we will head... what direction is this? We will take the northeast, or northern passage first, out of the maintenance room, or <clears throat> out of the pool room, excuse me. And as we come up to this stone wall, you can find a torch here, which you can activate for your first of nine secrets. Go ahead and do that. I'm going to go listen to the conversation in the interrogation area, even though there's no real reason to wander back here. None of these doors are relockable, by the way. We'll read this. I have ordered that murderer Schmidt be left in solitary to rot and that no one venture near him. I want to him to suffer as much as his victims did, Lieutenant Hagen. So if you open up that one, you can listen. 
You guys can't treat me like this. I'm a veteran. <laughs> yeah, I bet that's where you learn to pick pockets so well. When I got back, my family was gone. I had no money to live. Sure. Tell it to the sheriff. He's got a real soft spot for war heroes. So that's all. You can go back there and check out the prisoners and... You can do it without really alerting anybody because they'll see you and they'll talk, but they're not hostile. But I'm not going to bother. There is a ghostly hammer haunt back there. It just wanders and never reacts to your presence, and it's transparent, unlike your real haunts. But like I said, I'm not going to worry. Instead, let's just head to the morgue. You can check out the laboratory if you want. There's nothing useful in here. Let's go ahead and go into the morgue. Coroner's report. Identification unknown. Location. Body discovered in sewage tunnel. Cause of death. Pagan worship. And he's got a purse. He won't need that anymore. It's worth a hundred. It brings our total to 175. And I'll go ahead and note that this is another classic bug from Thief Gold that didn't get fixed in Thief 2. He counts as a pickpocket, but because he's dead, it counts as a failed pickpocket. So that, coupled with the usual Thief 2 bug, which says there's one more pickpocket than there really is in every mission, at the end of this level, we will have three out of five pickpockets because of that bug and because we failed that one. So technically, there's your first of four pickpockets, but it won't show up in your stats. One other thing to do before we head off to explore the rest of the basement. If you're into pickpockets, which I am, this is your best opportunity to slip in here and get this one. So it's actually easier to approach this guy just because of his angle from that main hallway than it is from the stairs up to the records hall. So, get that pickpocket, it's the first of three, and then just immediately drop the key. All right, what? As close as you possibly can, as usual. That was too close. I want to know who came up with the stupid idea of no drinking on duty. Alrighty. About the only thing that makes a cool Oh, once you get that pickpocket, you can head on back downstairs. There's nothing in that pool, I don't... I'm pretty sure there's not, anyway. But, uh, in these pools, starting in this one, I think, or maybe in the next one. I think it was the first one back there. You can find three water arrows down in the water if you're interested. I'm not interested in that, but I am interested in this statue in the last one. It's only worth 15. It brings our total to 190, but... Yeah, we need it for Perfect Thief. So at this end, there's another torch, which opens the passage to the maintenance room, and that is the second of nine secrets. Good to keep that in mind, now that we're sort of officially inside the station, out of the basement, whatever you want to call it, I'm gonna go ahead and do a real save. So we move up these stairs, and I'm going to take this opportunity to go ahead and completely clear the first floor. Well, almost anyway. So you move out here, the first thing you'll want to do is go ahead and go in the conference rooms, because one of the pieces of loot we need is in here. There's also a fun conversation to listen to. Okay, let's take it from the top. What happened? Well, my servant Genevieve is missing. Now, she had no reason to run away. I treated her like my own daughter. Well, who will take care of me now? 
Ma'am, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you're drifting off the subject again. Just stick to the facts, please. Are you going to help me or not? I'll have you know, I am a personal friend of Father Karras. He has a great deal of influence, you know. Where do you think all your fancy new devices came from? I doubt he would be pleased to find out you are neglecting to help one of his friends. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of your problem as quickly as I can. The sooner we're done here, the sooner we can start looking for your servant. Why don't you calm down and collect yourself while I go over what we have so far? I I'm sorry, officer. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> so that's Lady Rumford, the woman we robbed in the first mission. The spectacles in this room are worth 50 and bring our total to 240. Go ahead and move through here. Oops. Got a little careless there. Hug this wall. You can avoid any alerts as you move on into the front desk. What was that? Oops. Or front office, whatever you want to call it. There we go. Now in here, you want to be careful not to move too far forward. There's a conversation you can trigger, which I'll come back and listen to near the end. But I want to get the loot without adding an extra patroller to the halls. So I'm going to miss that conversation for now. Here's something to read. Attention all watch officers. In the short time, in a short time, we have nearly cleared the city of the criminal element that has plagued her for so long. I thank each and every one of you for the effort and initiative that you have displayed. Now we must direct this same form of hard justice towards another disease of the city, the pagans. We cannot allow these subversives to poison the minds of our fair citizens. On the water cooler, there are six water arrows, if you're interested. I'm going to leave all the security on. Just creep forward until you highlight the button, push it. That's the third of nine secrets. And you can't reclose that little panel, unfortunately. As long as you hold still, her showing up shouldn't matter. Main gate, alarm enabled. So you can actually disable the alarm here if you want to, but. We're not going to get seen, so there's no need for us to do that. So in that floor panel, there are four stacks of gold coins. 25 each bring our total to 340. And in order to avoid triggering that conversation, we're going to head... Strange. Oops. We are going to head back the way we came. have those bad boys first. I don't quite remember having this much trouble with Lady Rumford. Oh well, it wasn't that much trouble, was it? So with that done, the first floor is already very close to being cleared. We are currently facing the mess hall, which I'm gonna leave alone for now and turn right instead. I think he's How gonna... How come we got a pull guard duty? Couldn't the mechanist just put more of those mechan... mecha... mechanical eyes around the place? Because we can't be shut off as easily, you taffer. Oh, at least it's better than sitting watch for the downwinders. Damn right. No smell of sewage, no mildew, fewer rats. You ever wonder why Truert hired us? Not really. Probably figured we'd spend less time breaking the law since we'd be enforcing it. Gold is gold. Don't matter if it's coming from Reuben or Sheriff Truett. Little reference to Thief Gold, those guys used to work at the Thieves Guild. Uh oh. <clears throat> I didn't think he came down here, but no matter, that's a perfect shadow. So now with the coast clear, head south down this hallway. Should 
take us nicely around the front desk toward the training room. I'm gonna wait here until she patrols back into the front desk and then slip to the training room behind her. Inside the training room itself, you can find a rope arrow, but we have no need of it. And there's also a torch here. If you hit it, that's the fourth of nine secrets. So we want to head to the second floor through the training room. I know I said I was going to go ahead and clear the first floor, but I realized that was a lie and do things in a little bit different order. Close that passage behind us. Be careful of the fire. Not so secret anymore, is it? Close that one too, and we have arrived <clears throat> in Sheriff Truert's office. We'll start off with the vase and the plate on his mantle, worth 110 respectively. Bring our hard total to 450 and on Truert's desk we can find three stacks of coins 25 each bring our total to 525 and a lot of reading material too so let's enjoy that journal entry 684 Mosley is becoming an inconvenience lately she has been questioning my orders and her conduct regarding the pagans borders on insubordination she was always my best officer before why the sudden change I'm going to give her one more chance to redeem herself if she fails me again I'll have to give the case to Hagen he may not be as good an officer but he is loyal and vicious not the sort to have any moral dilemmas with this kind of assignment what really puzzles me is that she wants the case so badly. The last time I discussed it with her, I suggested she hand the case over to someone else. She assured me that she'd triple her efforts rather than let go of the assignment. And then a letter from Lieutenant Hagen. Sheriff Truert, I must insist that you pay closer attention to the activities of the Warden Affairs Division. I know how highly you regard their work, and I readily admit that they have shown very impressive results. However, I must point out that their arrest records indicate they have been avoiding certain wardens. Whenever evidence is presented against those wardens, it mysteriously disappears from evidence storage, even though the stationed guards assure me that no unauthorized evidence leaves the area. Respectfully, Lieutenant Hagen. Probably one of those ward very wardens hired us to do this frame job. Schedule, seven bells, stakeout, twelve bells, lunch at the Shoalsgate Tavern, one bell, meet with LK, two bells, meet with LZ, eight bells, appointment at Madame Volari's, ten bells, meet with LR. Alright, easy enough. Now, this is... The toughest spot in this mission, not that it's very tough, sneaking around the second floor, mostly because guards can hear your lockpicks if they're close enough, and you have to do some slightly fancy maneuvers with tracking guards in brightly lit hallways and timing your move around them with the ends of their patrols, but not so much right here. We'll have to do that later. And you see that the coast is clear. Go ahead and move on into narcotics. We'll loot these places one at a time. In narcotics, all there is is a purse underneath the desk on the far left. Brings our total to 575. It's worth 50. Now one thing to note, there were a couple in shipping and receiving, but they didn't really play into it because there weren't any guards nearby. 
but this is the first mission where there are gas lamps that matter. Those white torch looking objects with the blue flames in them. You can put them out with water just like anything else, but if you do, the guards will notice and they'll just go over and relight them. You can also relight them yourself just by using them. So there's really very little point in putting them out. It, you know, will buy you a little bit of time in the dark, but that's all. Things make us look So we need to time our move across the hall a little bit better. Let's get it while his back is turned. Then after you manage to slip in here, move down to this door. Behind it is just one bottle of wine, worth 50, brings our total to 625. Now we'll just keep hopping down this hallway, one office at a time. Alright. We'll wait for him to patrol all the way back and follow him down the hall to the north. Now, I already know the code, so we could skip secure records altogether, but that feels a little bit like cheating. I'm going to show you guys the intended route through the mission. So now, aware of the other guards. Came up with a stupid idea. No drinking on duty. Now, here's the other thing to worry about. He can hear you lockpicking. I hate. As you saw there, and he can actually hear it at a. Got to put in the hours. The guy down at the end of the hall saw me that time, so I'll just wait a little bit for him to move out of the way before I move out into the hall. And then you have to wait a good long while before it's safe to pick this door open. None of these office doors are relockable either. That's worth noting. Then get out of the way so the door can open fully, and we are now in Mosley's office. A few things to do in here. First, plenty of stuff to read. Letter from Sheriff Truert. Lieutenant Mosley, I put you in charge of handling the Pagans because you are my second in command. Until now, your record has been exemplary. I don't understand why your performance has faltered. If you do not want this case to be reassigned to Lieutenant Hagen, I suggest you double your efforts to rid the city of all Pagan influence. Also, it has been brought to my attention that numerous small thefts from the evidence vault have been occurring for some time now. Fire the officer that guards the vault. The sentries can handle the security by themselves. I want you to conduct an investigation immediately. Be it so ordered, Sheriff Gorman Truert. More reading material. This is the secure records vault key, which we'll need to take with us. Lieutenant, I instructed the mechanist, Brother Artis, to leave you a new key. The key will open the vault as well as the secure records room in the records hall, Sheriff Gorman Truert. Journal entry 2234. It's getting harder to protect my garden from harm. So many plants die. No matter how hard I try to protect them, they still fall victim to the elements. No matter what anyone tells me, I will not uproot them or cut them down. I don't know what we are doing here anymore. Half the people I give orders to are people I arrested before. Hopefully the war will be over soon and the Baron will return. I don't think I can take much more of Truert's new age, as Hagen so often puts it. And in here, there are two moss arrows and two water arrows, if you want them. Now, we just need to cross the hall and get into Lieutenant Hagen's office. But, as was a concern before, we have to make sure he's far All enough. Alright, who's making the rocket? Well, we have to make sure he's far enough away not to hear our footsteps and our lock picking. <clears throat> when the time comes. Okay, good. I'll 
Oops. Oh, dang it. Never that easy. I want to close Mosley's door. And then... Let's see what I can use against our Lieutenant Hagen. Here in Hagen's office, <clears throat> there are a couple of things. Reading material. Letter from Sheriff Truart. Lieutenant Hagen, I appreciate your memo regarding the Warden Affairs Division. I have personally investigated the matter and have found no evidence to support your accusation. They have ongoing investigations on the remaining Wardens and have made steady progress. They simply don't have enough of a case yet to move against them. As for the missing evidence, my search has determined that they were simply clerical errors. However, I have discovered that several thefts from the Vault have recently occurred. These thefts are in no way linked to the Warden Affairs Division. I want you to find out who is responsible. Start making inquiries into the other divisions, but stay away from Borden Affairs. Also, discuss this with no one, especially Lieutenant Mosley. Mosley's inability to handle the Pagans has caused me to question her resolve. I have considered handing over the assignment to you, but given Lieutenant Mosley's excellent past record, I want to give her one more chance. Be it so ordered, Sheriff Gorman Truert. Journal Entry 459. So often I hear the whispers of the men. What is the Sheriff really planning? Why is he so intent on bringing down the Pagans? Maybe the Sheriff isn't the man I thought he was. The members of City Watch are filled with doubt. It is my responsibility to see to it that they ignore their doubts. Sheriff Gorman Truard is unlike any man I have ever worked for. He has ushered in a new age, and it is up to us to support him unquestioningly. If Sheriff Truert asked me to arrest my own family, I would, without any hesitation. Why can't Mosley see this? She always questions everything. Why can't she just follow Truert's orders? We are not supposed to think, we are supposed to follow. Well, there you go. And here's his handkerchief. That's the personal item that we need. Ticks off our first objective. In the meantime, we're just gonna continue on up. Keep an eye on everybody. Go there. Alright, we might just have to wait for him to come back. I hope not. It'll be a long wait, but. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait. That's fine. If I move just a little faster, I should be able to get into the Vice office. No problem. Good. Reading material. Plenty of it up here. Journal entry 836. We are still unable to make a case against Madame Volari. Her brothel seems to be perfectly legitimate, but Lieutenant Mosley believes that there is more going on there, and so do I. The likely possibility is that they are using pillow talk to extract information from their rather aristocratic clientele. I can't believe I am saying this in a journal, but I think that the sheriff is somehow involved in this. I have seen Truard enter there on more than one occasion. But is he a client, or is he somehow working with them? All I know is that I am not going to say a word about this to anyone, especially Lieutenant Hagen. Mosley is the only one any of us can trust. And on the desk are three coins, two silvers and a gold. 12, 12, and 25 brings the total to 674. You need us need to. Who'd I see there? Make sure the coast is clear. Or... You know, stay, stay in a shadow for your leaning. And we'll cross the hall to 
robbery homicide. Alright, who's making See they can even he can even hear me opening doors without picking a lock. I wouldn't came up with this stupid idea. What's there? Alright. Probably easier just to wait till everyone's on their way back. At least for the actual move. I'll want to close the door. In Robbery Homicide, there is reading material. Journal Entry 709. Work's been pretty slow these days. Between Mosley and Warden affairs, every thief in the city is out of business. I can't believe we used to try to stop crime by arresting the thieves. By attacking the bookkeepers and fences, crooks have nowhere to turn to. Besides, who is more anxious about staying out of jail, a criminal or some whiny pencil pusher? Now, this is hard to find, but in the back desk on the left, there's a tiny ring. Worth 100 brings the total to 774. Now we want to break right. Tackle the waiting room first. All that's in here is this vase under the table. Worth another 100 brings our total to 874. Now I need to wait for this patroller to turn around again. And I'll follow him out. I need <clears throat> to get down this hall to the east into the officer's lounge. This looks like a perfect chance to do it. Hello? He has a key that we need to grab. It's the second of three pickpockets. You need to move fast. This, this patrol here is pretty short. I'll want to return that key, just drop it somewhere on his route, but in the officer's lounge, the only thing of interest are these two gold candlesticks on the tables. Worth 50 each, they bring your total to 974. As you can see, he patrols onto the carpet, which makes the carpet a perfect place to return his key. I'm gonna try and get back into the robbery homicide Let's office. Oh, but the timing is off. Have to wait another round. No problem there. Let's return the key again. Like I said, that is our second of three pickpockets. These yellow keys only open the vault ante room on the third floor. They can't be used to relock any of the other doors around the station. Just be a little more patient. Bust our move after he starts. I thought about getting greedy, but decided it was definitely smarter to duck into vice and quick save. No first alert from him. This is a great place to wait for the other guy to turn around. Now if you park here, you're safe. Thought I saw. 
Okay, I just wanted to see where she was. If we park here, I think she won't see us. Uh, or maybe she will. Who's there? Yeah, she will. Well, no matter. Just wait here for her to move. Of course, I can't actually see her, but I'm not that worried. We'll just time it. Back into Truert's office and back down to the first floor. We do need to head to Warden Affairs, but that's our route to the vault. There's no point in going there until we have the vault code. Which we can get from Secure Records. Which we get to from the rest of the first floor. So there was no point in continuing through the first floor until we got the 